Hi there, guys. My name is Octavian, and I suggest that you sit back and relax if you're going to be here for the full ride, because this is going to be quite a video. And, um, I will pass it off to the Shoutcast now, and we can get right on into this one. Though, actually, a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, the 100 cast series, because there's a few people new to my channel who are around, um, the 100 cast series is done mainly for my own practice, and anyone can send in a replay to this series, which means that occasionally I will get replays of games that are not Challenger, because you know the majority of players are, are not Challenger. So sometimes I'll get a game that doesn't have the highest skill players in it. If you're not looking for replays of games that are that fall into that category, then you might not want to watch the 100 cast series. There's plenty of other stuff on my channel you can go check out. That'll be some of the best play in the game. I've got challenger casts, I've got other series in those lines, but if you just are here to hear me shoutcast and you don't actually mind that the level of gameplay isn't going to be insanely high, then go ahead and continue watching. Because 100 Casts is more about my practice than about the actual gameplay going on on the screen. And it's also about giving people the chance to have one of their own games shoutcasted, because I think that's kind of cool. Anyways, down in bottom lane, it's going to be an Ash and a Sona facing off against a Janna and a Graves. Now, Janna Graves is a combo that I've been seeing a lot of recently. Um, and that might be just because Graves and Janna have both become popular, or it might be because people actually are figuring out that these two champions work very, very well together. One of Graves' disadvantages is his incredibly low range. He has to commit to a fight if he's going to be going into that fight, because he has to get right up in somebody's face to be able to do the majority of his damage, as you see right there, dashing forward, landing the buckshot onto Sona. But that is one of the downsides of Graves. He's not like a champion like um, Caitlyn or something who can poke and then back away pretty safely from a long distance. He has to get right up close and personal if he wants to fight. That means if the fight starts going sour, he doesn't have too many ways to get out of there too easily. He has quick drop, but if he uses that aggressively for the attack speed boost, or just to go close a gap, he's in a lot of trouble. Now, Janna helps to patch that up a little bit. Janna is the queen of disengage. So, if Graves starts a fight that he can't quite finish, Janna can help him get right on out of there. In addition to that, Janna can give somebody a boost of AD. As we see Graves going right in, the exhaust is landed onto him. Ash is turning back around, but there are so many minions, and that is one of the things you have to remember about these early fights. About six or seven minions will output the same damage as a level two or three champion. So, Basically, right there, that was a 2v3, simply because of the number of blue minions. It was a very good time for Janna and Graves to pick a fight, probably why they decided to go so aggressive, and Ash went incredibly low. Meanwhile, up in top lane, it is a Jarvan versus a Vladimir. Not a matchup that I can say I've casted too often. Ooh, and the first blood going over to Graves as he dashes forward, gets all three of the Buckshot procs onto Sona. By the way, you know how Buckshot, it looks like three bullets going in three directions? That's because it actually is three bullets. If you get hit by all three of those bullets, you take more damage than if you got hit by only one of them. So casting Buckshot right up in somebody's face does a lot more damage than if you just hit them with the tail end of one of the single shots off to the side of the cone or something like that. So another incentive for Graves to get right up close and personal, and another reason why Janna can be such a great backfall, for, or fallback for him, rather. Got the word backwards. Anyways, I will stop harping on this bottom lane, even though I do ab absolutely love the uh, combo on the side of blue team down here. And I will go to some of the other lanes. In the mid lane, it is a Syndra versus an Ari. Now, that's not too uncommon a matchup to see. Um, it's going to be basically a battle of the skill shots right there. Whoever can land either the Charm or the Scatter of the Weak. So basically, whoever can land their E is probably going to be winning the fight. Meanwhile, up in top lane, we the first gank of the game. G Cave is coming right up on into here. Flash fo away, flash forward from both. The top laner in the jungle going to be finishing off the kill. It goes over to Vi. Meanwhile, Bill Gamers is going very, very low. The minions didn't quite finish him off because Sona was there to save Ash's life with a shield and a heal. But as I was saying, the minions are uh, quite strong at low levels. Something you got to keep an eye on. And it looks like Cindy's going for a roam right here. Gets knocked up by the Howling Gale, though. Slowed by the Zephyr. Doesn't really want to go for a tower dive this early on. Actually, walks up and takes a tower hit, but then decides better of it and backs on away so 
I would actually say that that went really well for Blue Team, that uh, roam by Cinder, because Cinder kind of wasted a bunch of her time going down there, and now she's coming back up through the river. She's low on health, and Ari's at full, so Ari's going to force her to either go the long way, or is going to catch her out in the river right here. Meanwhile, up in top lane, Tabro is going in onto Varia. Ooh, and there is Ari catching out Jofu Steve, just as I thought she might do. However, does not have level 6, so not going to be able to hunt down and chase for the kill. Vi is roaming from the jungle here to the mid lane once again, while Tabro goes back in on Varia in the top lane and trades really well, actually. The Jarvan versus Vladimir lane, I expected to go in favor of Vladimir. He has the range and sustain advantage early on, and that can really snowball out of control. Vladimir is one of those champions who can snowball a lead, but whoo, Tabro has the damage, and he's not going for the extended laning phase sort of tactic. He's going for the burst your face down into the ground sort of thing that a full AD Jarvan can do. It's actually surprising. Uh, a lot of people get caught off guard by the amount of burst damage that Jarvan can do if he's built full AD, because usually you see him built off AD into a sort of bruiser or even sometimes a full tank build, especially if he's coming out of the jungle and he doesn't quite have as much gold as a solo laner of night. But as a solo laner up in top lane, he can afford to build full AD. Meanwhile, down on the bottom side of the map, though, we have a little bit of a 2v2 between the bot laners, but it's just going to end with both, of the, both sides backing away, having lost a bit of their health bars. I would say that, that trade actually went in favor of Red Team right there. Um, even though Graves is starting to pull out ahead, he's got the kill, which I believe was actually the first blood as well, but ooh, Vi roaming to the bottom lane, gets knocked up by the Howling Gale mid-Q, and so the gank is going to be entirely thwarted by the peeling pressure that PJ, PJ Fazier has on the support Janna. So that's one of the reasons why Janna has become so popular nowadays. It's incredibly difficult to gank a Janna lane. And uh, Vi gets the short end of that stick. Oof. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Jarvan is actually going to be teleporting back up top. He roamed down, couldn't get anything to happen, so he just has to teleport back on up to his lane. He's bought himself a pickaxe and two longswords, though, and that is going to be a lot more damage than the two amplifying tomes. There's the burst from Renin's graves. He got the level six before Ash was able to get hers. And so, Buckshot collateral damage right to the face after quick drawing forward. This guy knows how to pull off his combo. Meanwhile, up in top lane, the flag and drag lands on Devaria. Tabro is just following up with auto attack after auto attack. Eventually, the pool is popped, but the pool also costs some of Vladimir's health. So, Jarvan won that trade incredibly, incredibly hard, and he's going to continue to win trades most likely from here on out. Renin's going right in onto Lucy. Flash away! from Sona. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Jofu Steve is getting ganked here. The exhaust has been dropped. Milk Custard doesn't have any follow-up, though. Flash with the wall from P. Fraser, PJ Fraser, rather, but the stun lands into both of them. Milk Custard flashes, but doesn't quite make it over the wall. So it looks like Jofu Steve might be able to escape here. He does, indeed. The Howling Gale not quite going far enough to finish off the knockup. And so Syndra is going to be able to get out alive. Hmm, sorry. Just needed to grab a drink of water there. Been talking quick fire. Up in top lane, Tabro's gonna keep on going, keep on getting that lead even more oppressive over his opponent. I mean, my lord. I was talking about how Vladimir can really snowball a lane, but one of the things about that kind of champion is that while they can snowball a lane in their favor, if they start to lose a lane, they can really lose control of a lane, and that is what has happened up in the top lane here to Vera's Vladimir. He's got, he's just finished off his um, Hextech Revolver, whereas the Jarvan has a pickaxe, two longswords, and is heading on back home to base with a nearly 40 CS lead and two kills up over his opponent. He's going to go ahead and finish off the pieces to the Ravenous Hydra, going to be having that item completed probably on his next back. Meanwhile, down in bottom side, however, we do have a 2 and O Graves, and so that is going to be the sort of answer to the Jarvan on the other side, the fed counter carry to the top lane Jarvan carry. So as the game goes on, Remin's actually going to be dashing forward onto Bill Gamers. He's forced to flash away, and Lucid, 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 that's that's what his name is. I didn't see the deed the first time I said his name, but it is Lucid996, Lucid996 on Sona. Going to be providing a little bit of backup, but that is a flash burn just for a quick draw forward, so good trade for Graves and Janna, and they're going to keep on going with the aggression down here. They've got a 20 CS lead, so that's uh, that's going to be translating to a lot of item advantages, especially considering that Ash has not chosen to go with very much AD early on, and instead has opted for crit chance and attack speed. Ooh, 
Determente's first gank of the game, this Jungle Malphite coming out large at level 6, gonna be going right into the mid lane with the Unstoppable Force, and finishing off the kill. Meanwhile, Renans is still dashing forward onto Lucid, and getting another Buckshot off. So the trades have still just been going steadily in favor of Renans and PJ Frazier down here on the bottom side of the map, and the lane has been steadily going in their favor as well. And I really don't think that building into the Avers Blade, Avers Blade rather, and the Dagger was the best choice for Ash. See, she possibly could have gone with more Darn's Blades, or maybe just a Vampiric Scepter, something to help her sustain in the lane, as well as giving her more dueling potential. Because the crit chance is not really going to be helping her unless she gets very, very lucky during fights. But I'll, I'll digress, I'll get back to that later. Up in the top lane, Tabor is forced to flag and drag away as the teleport comes in to save <laughs> Vladimir. Bill Custard actually choosing to take teleport on that Ari, something that I should have noted earlier, but didn't actually notice until now. So they do have two teleports on the side of Blue Team, which means they have a lot of map pressure. And they're going to go ahead and take this first dragon of the game. Smite not quite securing it, but it's okay, because Graves is there with an auto attack to take down that last 65 points of hit, of the hit variety, as uh, Bill Gamers getting engaged on here. The nice knockback from PJ Frazier using the Monsoon aggressively. Always great to see that happen. Bill Gamers does turn around with the ulti flash forward from Renan. It's going to be finishing off the kill after the stun wears off. Now, GK forced to flash away himself, came in to try and back them up, but just didn't have the ability to keep on going with that fight. And Lucid shows up, tosses out a Q, and then turns around and leaves. They do have Syndra roaming from the mid lane, however, but it was spotted by a ward. This roam Yep, there's the be careful ping, and now Ari's waiting in the bush for her to come back up to mid lane. Doesn't look like she's going to commit to the ambush. And G gave, G cave rather goes back to farming her jungle. Nice max range charm. Some good harass for Milk Custard. I love that both mid laners have like food related names. Jofu Steve and Mid Custard, Milk Custard. I'm assuming Jofu is a play on the word Tofu, though. Maybe it's something else that some other reference to something else that I'm not getting, but I like to think that it's Tofu. Tofu versus Custard. Ooh, Max Range Orb Deception tagging Jofu Steve once again, both on the um, initial cast and the return path, so lots of damage right there. And that is probably the best way to um, hit that spell if you're able to as Ari. Just hit them with the very edge of it because then it basically instantly hits them with the magic damage and the true damage right after, and they don't have very many ways to dodge the true damage count, the true damage after effect of the spell returning to you. Because for those of you who didn't know, which maybe some people in the audience, um, the Q for Ari, Orb of Deception, um, does magic damage on the way out and then true damage on the way back. So it can do quite a burst of damage even to someone who's building half resist to counter you. Renin's dashing forward, doing some good damage to Lucid, while Tabro is going for sort of an invade here. Doesn't have very much backup, and Blue Team has lots of backup in the area, so if he commits to this again, he might very well be kind of caught out. Vladimir's around the corner there, and Malphite sees him coming this time, and Tournamente's gonna be going in with the Unstoppable Force. Tabro gets knocked up, and he has a lot of damage, so he's a little bit squishy. He hasn't built into any tanky items. Very gonna be flashing over the wall. Pool of blood as well to try and catch up. Does give a little bit of a speed buff. Hema Flake is dropped. The Q is there as well. Transfusion doing some good damage. Meanwhile, down on the bottom side of the map, Renin's is on a rampage. Lucid turning around, bringing Renin's very low flashes forward. J Cave is coming forward as well with the Q, but the knockback, the wonderful monsoon from PJ Frazier, gonna be saving his friendly Graves' his life. Well done, Jana. And meanwhile, up in top lane, the tower dive did not quite work out. Jarvan managed to escape with his life. Well done by Jarvan. And a little bit of a um, failed gank by Tournamente. Lots and lots of cooldowns burned, and Jarvan still managed to get out of there alive. So, a little bit of um, a wasted opportunity there from the blue team, though they make up for it somewhat on the bottom side of the map where Renin's is continuing. Well, it's a, it's a rampage. That's what four, being 4 and 0 oh is. It's very appropriate uh, kill title. And this uh, jungle matchup is some is the one matchup that we haven't really taken the time to touch upon yet because well, lots of lots of action, um, and so I didn't have time to go into every single matchup. And it looks like I'm gonna have to save that for later. Varia is getting engaged upon here by Tegro. And that is all she wrote, really. Tabro is on a killing spree. This Vladimir is having a terrible, terrible time to it up in the top lane. And that is one of the things about Vladimir. He doesn't really have very many abilities to come back into a lane after he's fallen behind because he just either does enough damage to kill someone or to keep himself alive in a fight, or he doesn't because all of his spells are point and click. And, I mean, Hemoplake is technically a skill shot, but it's... A very short range, a very wide area skill shot that basically you can point and click on someone to be able to cast. So 
he doesn't have an incredible amount of depth, which means he doesn't have an incredible, uh, incredibly varied a pool of abilities with which to bring himself back into a matchup. But I digress, and I will talk about the jungle matchup, which is something that I needed to get into and have not really had the ability to so far. Now, both junglers actually are quite similar champions. Vi has a much better early game than not Vi. Ooh, but we're, we're past the early game already here. We're getting into the mid-game as this game progresses. Malphite has hit his level 6. He's able to pull off ganks every time Unstoppable Force is up, which, by the way, it is up right now. So I expect him to go and try and make a play somewhere on the map. Vi, on the other hand, has insane, a, a similarly powerful level 6 as well, but her pre-level 6 is much more powerful for ganking. However, Renz does get stunned up by the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. There's the heal and the Monsoon, keeping him alive a little bit longer, but it's not quite long enough. PJ Frazier might be in trouble now. Yeah, going right down the damage from Lucid996 going to be finishing him off after the CC from Vi holds him in place. Whew, two more kills for Red Team. Dragon is going to be spawning in a minute, so if they can hold control of this area for a little bit longer, they'll be able to take this Dragon buff. And even if they aren't here in time for the Dragon to respawn, it does mean that they're able to clear out a lot of vision in the area and prepare for it. But Jofu Steve forced, forced to heal and flash away. So quick I couldn't even talk about it. And that is what an Ari can do. Didn't quite flash into the push, but still created enough distance that he was able to escape the Ari seeing as Spirit Rush had been used previously defensively, and so wasn't quite up to be able to keep on chasing after. If Milk Custard had had Spirit Rush up, I'm pretty sure that that Syndra would have been toast. But thankfully, for Jofu at least, that's particularly cool now. Bill Gaines, in a very bad place, tries to flash with the wall but doesn't quite make it, and so collateral damage is going to be finishing him off. The big, big bullet comes out from Renin's and does the last little bit of dirty work that he needed done. And it looks like they're going to go ahead and push the bottom lane to Tournamente is here as well for a little bit of backup to go ahead and take this turret. The dragon is just about to respawn and um, blue team, I believe, is the, no, blue team did not take the last one. That was red team that took the last dragon. So they do not actually have the timer. Red team does and Vi is pinging there on the map wanting to come down and make something happen there. And no, blue team was the one that took the dragon last time. Yes, I, I'm all... All sorts of messed up in terms of Dragon Buff. But I do believe that it was Blue Team, and they're gonna go ahead and take the tower here, head on over to the Dragon Pit right after, most likely. And maybe we'll see some sort of fight over that objective since Red Team is starting to come out here in force. G Cave chasing through the jungle onto PJ Fraser. Some good damage from Joe Proceeds. Slow lands as well. PJ Fraser flashes away, but I think it's a little bit too late for him. The Q lands from G Cave. He knocks them up, though. He might be able to escape here. No, G Cave flashes forward and just about has the damage necessary to bring down the Janna, even through what remained of her shield. Meanwhile, up in top lane, Tabro is still pushing hard and nobody's around to stop him. Eternamente is forced to go back to deal with this Jarvan, and that's their jungler. That Malphite is their jungler, which means that Red Team can go after the dragon here with no chance of a smite steal away from Malphite. G Cave is roaming down towards there. It would be very, very odd of them not to go for this dragon buff unless they just aren't seeing this opportunity on the map here, which is... A, which is potentially what's going on, but it looks like they're going to go ahead and start out the Dragon buff while Eternamente is stuck in top lane dealing with the pressure that Jarvan left behind in his wake. He's now going to mid and he's going to go ahead and push that one up as well while the Dragon goes over to Red Team. Good, good attempt by Graves. He tossed the ult over the wall there, I don't know if you guys saw, but the animation for collateral damage didn't come flying over the wall into the Dragon Pit, but it was a little bit too late, sadly. And they're going to swap over to mid lane, go ahead and push that down. Tabro, very, very good at taking turrets. Full AD Jarvan does quite a bit of damage to those turrets, especially when he has his flag out. He gets the free attack speed buff, and he has all of that AD to work with, obviously, which is very useful for taking down turrets. Whoa, there's the Unstoppable Force. The tournament they has left top lane. He is coming here with a vengeance. Joku Steve is going to be the one going down first, and now they're going to be chasing after Tabro. The slow lands, the exhaust is dropped by PJ Frazier, and Tabro actually has a fair bit of tankiness. He's picked up the Mercury's Treads and a Health Crystal, so he's not going down very quickly, and he's not very easy to CC, so he manages to escape through the jungle. Well done for him. And this whole time, Bill Games was pushing the bottom lane on that Ash. Managed to get another outer turret for Red Team. Oh, and actually, Enchanted Crystal Arrow stops the potential gank from Janna coming down the river. Now, Vladimir, something that I've uh, hinted at a few times is that Vladimir is not having the best lane of his life in this particular game, but he has made up for it somewhat at this point by pushing up the top tower, getting the second turret of the game for blue team on the board here, 
and blue team really needs to get some more turrets. Vladimir having lost his lane as abysmally as he did does mean that Jarvan managed to push up and take two turrets out of that lane, and all the other outer turrets are down for blue team, so that means they're behind by two turrets right now. So they need to make some sort of concerted push somewhere on the map to be able to get maybe an inner turret in top or bottom, though that seems a lot less likely than simply getting the outer turret in mid lane. Spirit rush away from Milk Custard as GK comes in to try and make a gank happen here in the mid lane. He's going to use the next charge of Spirit Rush to go in towards Joe through Steve, and then just save the last one. Three seconds. Now dashes forward and actually gets hit by the scatter the roof there, but there's nothing going to be coming of that. Something interesting that uh, should be noted here, though, is the fact that Vi has Sheen floating around her hands. Looks like she's going to be going into a Trinity Force Vi build, which is a lot more of a damage build than I expected. They already have the big, heavy damage bruiser in the top lane in the form of Jarvan. I didn't really expect Vi to go that route as well. But to be fair, Vi is 2 0 and 2. She's been doing perfectly fine. So G Cave can afford to build into a little bit of damage if he feels like it, and it's going to make it all the harder for Renin's to be able to stay alive during these team fights because Jarvan's going to be getting into the back lines with Cataclysm and, of course, the uh, standard and Dragon Lance combo. And Vi is going to be getting into the back lines with Well Pressing R on Graves. Not really much that you can do about that because Vi is very, very good at getting the backside. On the other side, however, there's an Ari and a Malphite going to be getting to the back lanes onto Bill Games, who's in a lot of trouble right now, forced to pop heal to get away from the Graves. But yeah, there's going to be like dive and counter dive in these team fights if things go according to what it seems to be the plan from both teams. Vi's going to be able to jump right to the back lines and get right in Graves' face. But I think Graves and Janna are going to have a much easier time of dealing with the dive than the Ash and the Sona. Flash forward! The, the, what? They, can they hit an ultimate? The heal is popped and Flash overall from Bill Games is going to be finally bringing down Renin's. I am just flabbergasted. Whew, that is... I don't know, maybe he's got some sort of repulsive field around him that just keeps ults from hitting him, but Graves did not get touched by anything there, and Eternamente is going to be landing the ulti onto Bill Games, and here is Jonna for the backup as well. Actually, a big crit and he's bringing PJ Fraser down pretty low, but Lucid's not in any position to follow up on that, especially considering Milk Custard is around to finish off the kill onto Sona. Actually, no, Jonna picked it up with an auto attack, but... Still, um, Milk Custard, actually PJ Fraser is going right in onto G-Cave, and G-Cave is going to be bringing PJ Fraser down. The double kill under the tower as well onto Ari, and that's where that damage buy is paying off. Did quite a burst there to Janna after coming in with the Assault and Battery. I thought Janna maybe was going to be able to escape after Vi's ult ended. Maybe uh, cast a knockup or just Monsoon or something to be able to get out of there, but did not have the time to do that before Vi pressed E and the burst from that Sheen proc along with the uh, E damage just kind of absolutely decimated her health bar. Sorry if you heard that, by the way. I dropped a pen, but that is not entirely relevant. As it uh, looks like Jarvan and Vi are going in for another round. GK is going in under the tower, auto running along with Tabro. Tabro tanking a lot of tower shots and a buckshot that was going very, very low. The teleport's coming to the bottom lane. PJ Tracer showed up as well, and that's the shutdown. Going over to Graves. Vi had nowhere left to run. They bit off way more than they could chew in going for that particular tower dive. I mean, it worked for them the last two times. They thought maybe if they just keep repeating that same formula, it'll keep giving them good results, but they were a bit lower on health that particular time, so they didn't manage to do it. Now, we have a 1v1 between Bill Games and Faria. This is, this is, this is for all the biscuits right here. Who's going to win this one? Flash! Forward! <laughs> uh, in, the mid, in the mid lane... Ari's gonna be getting the kill into Syndra, and that happened. Oh god, I'm I'm sorry. I try not to lose composure. Okay, PJ <laughs> Fraser going in the one v one with Lucid, nine nine six in the mid lane. Good Q landing there from a tournament. A nice job. You clicked on a man. And uh, they're gonna go ahead and push up the mid lane as well. And this is what I was talking about. They need to get these outer turrets down. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whew. Whew, okay. Spirit Rush Forward, the Charm doesn't actually land on the Lucid, but the Orb of Deception doesn't land either. Milk Custard not connecting anything that he needed to land there, but they're still going to be able to get the turret here most likely. Actually going under the tower for some damage on the Lucid as well. And actually because of that aggression, they don't manage to get the last little bit of hit points out of the tower for them to back off instead of going through the tower dive. But Eternamente does manage to steal away the blue buff at least. Smite steal for Malphite. Well done. He didn't even know that that was going on, he was just looking to try and get some vision in the enemy jungle. Happened to walk in right at the perfect time to be able to smite steal away a blue buff, but that does mean that smite is not up right now, and they're going to be starting off dragon. There's the collateral damage, Lucid 966, in a very, very bad place in the middle of the river there. 
and falls over. Now, GK looking to maybe make some sort of engage happen here along with Jarvan. There's the assault battery and just barely has the damage button down Renan's before he falls. Then, gets the double kill on the Jana and might be able to escape. No, Varia is here to press Q on him. Now, Varia is in his blood pool tournament. He gets hit up by the Enchanted Crystal Isle that wasn't meant for the Vladimir. There's the flag. There's the auto attack. Jarvan gets the shutdown, but then gets shut down himself, giving a kill over to Varia, who desperately needed the gold. Now, Bill Games is in another 1v1 Varia. Are we going to see the three inch flash once more? He goes into the bush. He gets some sustain off of Transfusion, but it's not enough. Ash picks up the kill there. And uh, maybe Dragon? Yeah, it looks like they're going to be heading towards Dragon after taking out the crab here. Bill Games and Goku Steve going to be taking on the giant lizard in a two man battle. And, and no one from Blue Team is anywhere near this objective. So, even though they're going to lose a bit of health doing it, that is going to be another objective going over to Red Team, who are still leading in terms of objectives on the board here, and have been for quite a bit. Not, not by a ton, they haven't been leading by a ton, but they've been leading consistently throughout most of the game here. They have the 4-3 to three turret lead, they have the 2-1, two to, one, two to I think 2-1 to one dragon lead, though ugh, I really need to keep better track of dragons! They have, I believe they have the dragon lead as well, since that was the second dragon buff that they've picked up, and they even have the kill lead. So they have the lead even in the tiniest of objectives, kills. I would argue, actually, that CS is a more valuable objective than kills, but some people might disagree with that. PJ Frazier forced to pop the Janna ult to keep himself safe from a gap-closing Jarvan, while the Tournamente goes to take a solo red buff, clearing out his jungle a little bit. Ash actually sees him doing this. Nowhere near close enough to go and steal it, but does know that the tournament is nearby, so probably gonna like push up one more minion wave and then head on out of there. If indeed he just yeah, he's not even choosing to push that last minion wave, just gonna head right out of there after the tournament finishes off his red buff. But Lucid 966 might be in some trouble. Flashes over the wall. Does not want a single part of that. No part of that. At all. Tabro, roaming into the enemy jungle, gets hit by an hell and gale. Ooh, and there's the unstoppable force on the GK. Tried to hit Syndra along with him, didn't quite have the range to do that. No custard gonna be finishing off by though, so they at least get that consolation prize. Renan splashes out of the ulti, but then goes down to the damage from Jarvan. Anyways, now Lucid 966 lands a beautiful crescendo, but I don't really think it's gonna matter all that much. He's getting burned down himself. PJ Frazier nearly goes down to the damage from Syndra. One more auto attack follows him through his flash, and the Janna goes down, but the Syndra might be in some trouble herself. Whew, yeah, does indeed fall. The Tournamente bringing down Lucid as well, and Ash is the lone survivor off back in the base, while Vladimir pushes top lane. And this, uh, he hasn't really been contributing a ton to this game so far in terms of team fights or in terms even of holding his own lane. He's lost two turns himself, but he's just been sitting up there, and every time Jarvan has gone to try and apply his pressure elsewhere on the map, Vladimir has done what a lot of top laners like to do in split and going to continue to gain advantage of his team. The Tournamente is in a lot of trouble here, though. The continual slows from a red buff Ash using Frost Shot is something that is incredibly, incredibly annoying and difficult to escape, and a Tournamente is not going to be able to escape. So, he makes it into the grave, rather than out of there, and the games will continue to push up in the mid lane. Jana's Tornado did a lot of damage right there, and you know why? It's because she has a death cap! I'd just like to point that out, that Jana does indeed have a death cap in her inventory, so that's a lot of damage that a Jana support's gonna be doing, so... I mean, yeah, why build support items when you can just be the AP carry yourself? while your AP carry is also being an AP carry. Have two of them, why not? Who needs, who needs only one? It looks like even Malphite is building into a little bit of an AP carry sort of role, but PJ Frazier might be in some trouble. The death cap is not going to be saving him from these crits. He goes down, Lucid 966 actually finishing off back kill. We're going a little bit too close to the tower, getting charmed underneath it. No custard might be in some trouble here. The tower dive from G Cave. That damage is paying off once again, but a tournament is here with the unstoppable force, knocking the G Cave up under the tower while Renan's coming in for some burst damage on his own. Collateral damage on the G Cave is going to be finishing off the kill there under the tower. As Vladimir actually want to take that. I'll begin to come back in the game a little bit more. Speaking of death caps, Vladimir has finished his off as well, so that is the first really big item going into his inventory. He flashes forward for the damage. Oh god, he gets the kill onto Ash. Can he finish this off? He just has pull up in time, and he gets the double kill, flashing right into their faces. He does not care one little wit about them. Not at all. He will go in for the 1v2 if he feels like it. Meanwhile, Tabro splitting from the top lane does get the inhibitor, but he might be paying for it with his life. The Hex is not really going to help too much against Graves' damage. And Varia is there to get the Rampage and finishes it off just on the other side of the wall. I mean, Renan's wasn't going to get it. It wasn't really a kill steal, but in the spirit of things, it seems sort of like one. <laughs> 
Maybe if Ronin's had finished with his collateral damage rather than leading with it, he might have been able to get the kill over the wall. But hindsight is, of course, 2020. And Tournamente, speaking of finishing, has finished off his Abyssal Scepter, which it seems like that was what he was going into before, and yes, indeed, that is what he's decided to buy. Now, Abyssal Scepter is a pretty decent item item on Malphite, and it um, synergizes very well with his other item choice in the form of Sunfire Cape. Abyssal Scepter lowers the magic resistance of all those around you, of all enemies around you, rather. If it worked on allies, too, that would be a little bit of a strange thing. Um, and the Sunfire Cape, of course, does magic damage to all those around you, so you lower their resistance and you do damage that pertains to said resistance, which means Abyssal, Clo Abyssal Cloak is going to be Abyssal Scepter, rather, is going to be making the Sunfire do more damage. Just flat out, because he bought that item, the Sunfire is now going to be effectively doing more damage. Whoa! The damage from those cousins is real. He's going down very fast himself, though. Joker Steve doesn't quite have the time to finish off the burst that he needed to to bring down the Ari before he goes down to a few crits from Renin. Now Renin's is dashing forward. He has the AD buff, but nobody can CC this guy! He dashes away from both the collateral damage and the knockup. If Varia had just auto-attacked, Instead of using his Q on Vladimir, he has a red buff. They might have been able to catch catch the Vi. If Varia on that Vladimir had chosen to auto-attack rather than simply use Transfusion, they might have been able to get the Vi. To be fair, that's something that he probably wasn't going to be paying attention to in the heat of battle. And uh, Varia is now unstoppable, coming out of a landing phase that no one could ever rightfully call anything but pretty bad, um, if you want to be kind about it. He's come into his own here. He's got seven kills now, and he's evened up at a 1 KDA, but Eternamente is getting knocked aside. Vi wants to go right in onto Red Hens, perhaps. Diving that far wasn't the best of ideas. So far, a one-for-one one trade. PJ Fraser going to be going down two-for-one trade overall. So, actually, pretty, pretty decent play by Red Team. They managed to come out ahead on that one, and they stop, more importantly, they stopped the mid-inhibitor turret from falling, and they still have the top inhibitor turret down, which means they're super minions pushing into the enemy base right now. So they really can't afford to come out and contest this dragon. They would lose a nexus turret. They actually did just lose one of their nexus turrets. Well, actually, no, that was a bottom lane turret, I believe, that went down. And they nearly lost a nexus turret. It threw me off, because I was talking about nexus turrets just as the turret went down. But that is going to be the third dragon of the game going over to red team. They're going to go ahead and group up in the mid lane. They still have their health bars pretty full and fresh, along with their mana bars as well. And they can go ahead and look for some sort of team fight here in the middle lane. They have the advantage in gold right now. They have the advantage in map pressure because they still have super waves pushing up the top lane. And they're going to take another turret in the mid lane. Ooh, good burst onto Bill Games, but not quite enough to bring him down. And Sari doesn't want to jump in there right now. I actually didn't have the option to jump in there. Spirit Rush is currently down. Yeah, so it turns out without Spirit Rush up, Milk Custard doesn't quite have the burst to bring down Ari, I mean, bring down Ash in a single combo, so that's at least something nice to know for the Ash. That would put me at ease a little bit to know that Ari at least has to have her ult up to be able to kill her. But I mean, even, even then, on Ash, that's kind of small comfort because Ari and Malphite are incredibly good at killing off a champion like Ash. It's very, very low mobility and rather squishy. G Cave is going right into the back lines, getting on soon away, but there's the Ash ult coming from base. And PJ Frazier is so, so very dead. Oh, flash forward from Tabro over the wall. Really wants this kill in the middle. Custer, this is the Flagon Dragon. Doesn't quite land the knockup, but gets the slow. Now, going into Cataclysm, deal a huge burst of damage. This full AD Jarvan is doing lots and lots of work. And Milk Custard goes down to a final Q. No, I suppose I can't rightfully call it full AD anymore. He does have two cloth armors in his inventory. Looks to be going into perhaps a Warden's Mail. That wouldn't be a terrible pickup, seeing as there is a bunch of AD coming out from Renin. who is getting stunned up. Forced to dance by Sona. The Hemoplague's doing some good work, though. Everybody's taking a bunch of damage here from Red Team. GK is left all alone under the tower, and Eternamente finishes off that kill. An ill-fated dive from the side of Red Team. They could possibly, if they had pulled Jarvan over the mid lane, just gone for the five-man push and pressured him onto the tower and gotten the inhibitor down there. But they decided instead to go aggressive to try and make their lead into even more of a lead, but they couldn't quite take that much on and um, ended up giving up a kill, actually, and losing the momentum on the map. It's a fine line you have to walk. It's a knife's edge that you have to balance on be between knowing how much aggression you can put out before it's over-aggression and you end up giving up advantages you already have. 
Because of course you always want to be taking more and more advantages. You never want to say no to an opportunity to take an advantage unless you know that it's not really an opportunity that's going to work out. The point where the skill comes in, the point where the good player is separated from the great player, is when the person knows exactly when they can take an advantage and not have the risk of getting something. But PJ Frazier is caught inside the cataclysm, actually sort of makes it into his own protective little circle by using Monsoon to knock Jarvan right out of there. And uh, Jarvan and Syndra both go down on the bottom side of the map. Unfortunate attempt at a 2v2 turns into a 2v4 for red team. And Renin is going to go ahead and take away the red buff while Eternamente split switches up the top lane, dealing with the pressure up there. Where thankfully, at least, their inhibitor has respawned at this point, so they no, long, no longer have to deal with super minion waves pushing up their top lane continually, and they can focus on some of the rest of the map. Which means that the next time Dragon is up, they're going to be able to contest it a bit more easily, unless Jarvan can come back up here to the top lane and force them to have that pressure up there once again. Also, perhaps... Baron is an objective that will open up to these teams in the near future. We're 36 minutes, 37 just about minutes, into this game, and either team could pretty easily take down the giant purple lizard. So, once some good pressure is put out somewhere on the map, maybe a team gets a catch somewhere, or they manage to push down an inhibitor on the bottom side of the map, the point farthest away from Baron. That is probably the biggest boon you can have to take the Baron by the way. You can take someone's bottom lane inhibitor, it forces them to deal with pressure all the way on the other side of the map from Baron, and that means that it's just that much easier to take Baron, because if they come and contest you with the Baron, they at least you at least get something from the fact that they're ignoring their bottom lane there, and they're probably going to be losing a tower, maybe a Nexus tower on that side of the map. If they choose to stay at and defend their towers, whoa, the damage from Melcaster over the wall! I will return to what I was saying in a second there, and see as we have a fight on our hands. GK is slowly... Slowly getting taken out. Actually, he interrupts the Q with a beautiful monsoon locking him up against the wall. There's the knockoff from Howling Gale as well. And eventually, eventually, this Vi might die. The Q lands. The Rando is omen for the slow. The E doesn't quite connect, but the knockoff doesn't quite connect either. Nobody can bring GK down. He gets away. He has barely 50 hit points left, but he gets away. Meanwhile, Ren is on a rampage, bringing down Tabro, who was for some reason at the Nexus turrets. I don't know entirely why Jarvan was there, but it ended up being the wrong decision for him, and Ari is going to teleport on into the Baron Pit, where her team has started off the giant purple objective. Syndra is coming to run down here, though, has a suspicion that the enemy team might be doing Baron. Doesn't want to go and face check it herself, though, which is probably wise. Not really a good idea to walk into a potential Ari and Malphite combo. And so it looks like, albeit slowly, Blue team is getting an uncontested Baron right here. Since Eternamente and PJ Fraser, probably the two lowest damage champions on Blue team were the ones who started it off. It didn't go down all that quickly, but they did manage to take it out. And uh, that's going to be the purple buff circling around the heads of all five members of Blue Seth. Which, by the way, in the preseason, Baron buff did get changed, for those of you still perhaps unaware of this. Um, it no longer gives the statistic advantage that it used to give. Now it is primarily for pushing power. Any minions nearby a champion that has been that have been buffed by the Baron buff become utterly monstrous minions. Also, as you can see on your screen right now, with the tournament heading back to base, it cuts the basing time in half. So it also makes it very, very easy to deal with people attempting to backdoor you. So you can get a coordinated push going on, and then if someone tries to backdoor you to counter out the fact that you're pushing in onto their base, you can press B and B back there, along with a speed buff. The Baron also gives you a speed buff after returning home to base that stacks on top of a home guard speed buff. You can be right back there and foiling their pushing plans nearly immediately. So, Baron buff is quite a boon for a team that wishes to push to try and take the victory. Red team, however, is going to take the dragon, and that is their fourth dragon of the game. So, arguably, now dragon is the buff that you want to be stacking up in the late game if you're not thinking pushing and you just want a fighting buff. But GK is going in onto Renin's more as a way to escape than anything else. The damage from Ari not quite enough to bring down the Vi, and now the rest of Vi's team has shown up, so they have not quite gotten the, the uh, catch that they needed before the rest of the team showed up to foil them. And Joku Steve is still push, push, split pushing the top. Not exactly the one I expected to be sent to split push by red team. But it's better than nothing, they do have that pressure in the top lane, eventually the inhibitor will go down, and Tabro 
Ari no longer has Spirit Rush. No way to get out of this cat. He does have Zoran to try and delay it a little bit longer, but is eventually going to be going down. Now Rattans is dashing forward and doing some good damage of his own. Lucid 966 is on the retreat. Rattans is unstoppable as the collateral damage comes out. And Syndra is in a duel 1v1 in the top lane with PJ Fraser. And for some reason, losing it, I, I guess... The Cinder doesn't have any mana here, so PJ Fraser with that AP Jana build is actually able to do enough damage to bring down Jofu Steve in the 1v1. I did not think I would be seeing this this game, but it is indeed what is going on. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, GK, Tournamente, and Renans are in some sort of 2v1. Tournamente and Renans are both forced to flash away out of there. And, uh,. I really don't know who won in all of that. I guess the top lane inhibitor went down, so that's going to be a huge advantage for red team right there. More free pressure for them on the map. Going to be helping them counter out the fact that blue team with this Baron buff is going to be wanting to keep on pushing. But blue team got the Baron buff, and blue team got a bunch of kills. More kills than did red, so... In terms of gold, I suppose blue team came out ahead. Um, in terms of map pressure, I would say that red team might have come out a little bit of head. Perhaps they came out even, simply because the Baron buff is so good at helping push. But if the blue team isn't really looking to push right now, then the Baron buff isn't really going to help them all that much. So, I, I actually, I, I'll change my mind. I'm going to say that red team came out ahead in terms of gained map pressure from that trade, because an inhibitor at this point in the game is a incredibly valuable asset. It's going to help stop Varia Tops, Varia Tops, Vladimir Split Push. But speaking of Varia in the top lane, Tegro and G-Cave are both here along with... Jofu and with and Lucid. This is a very, very dead game. Shut down gold. Going over to Vi. And um that's going to help her continue on into what seems to be a pretty much pure damage build. She's got a Randuin's omen, but on top of that is just a bunch of damage items. Vampiric Scepter, um, that is a warrior enchantment on the Ranger's Trailblazer. A Mob Malmordius, a Trinity Force. Like, the, I suppose the Mob Malmordius is somewhat of a defensive item as well. Ooh, the Arrow from Ash not quite landing on anyone. That is unfortunate. That is one of their main engage tools for Tabro. Looking to do a bit of engage himself. A Tournamente whips his ulti entirely too. Can anybody land an ulti in this fight? Monsoon does connect onto a few people. The GK is going to the back line onto Renan. He takes way too much damage to be sustained though. And he goes down. Meanwhile, Jana is forced to flash away but does indeed manage to save her own life. But down in the bottom side of the map, Ash is continuing with the split push here. So Blue Team has to make something really, really impactful happen here or else they're going to lose out on this trade because even though they gained a 3 for 1 kill trade, they lost an inhibitor, and that's perfectly fine for Red Team. They now have super minions split pushing for them in top and in bottom. This is... Every trade in terms of kills has been going to Blue Team. They have the better team for team fighting right now. Both in terms of how much they are ahead and in terms of how they've been using their comp. They actually have a decent team fighting comp. They have a good way of diving to the back line and dealing with enemy carries. And Vi having built as squishy as she has doesn't really have the ability to dive to the back lane right now because Renans can just delete her. Renans and Ari, the, the Graves and the Ari, can do so much damage that Vi trying to get to the back lines, even though she gets there, she uses Assault and Battery, like by the time she gets there with Assault and Battery, she's already at half health or maybe even less, and then she just takes a buckshot to the face and dies. And so this full damage Vi build is not something I would have advised it advised. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. I'm terribly sorry. But um, but if it, it, it's where he's choosing to go, perhaps he should be changing his playstyle a little bit and playing as more of a skirmisher than a diver. But the thing is, his team kind of needs to dive because that's kind of what they're all about. With Jarvan and Vi and even Syndra somewhat. Syndra isn't really a dive, but she's still catch. They're all about catching people out and getting those singular important kills during team fights, Bringing down the enemy carry nearly instantly. And if Vi is going to be playing as more of a cleanup crew sort of, um, sort of play style, then it's really going to be demanding what her team is attempting to do with their team fights. Oh, but going right in on Ari. This might be exactly what GK needed, and he does have the burst. That's true. His build does allow him to have the burst there. But he goes down pretty quickly, as you see. Trading one for basically one. Yeah, GK will be going down to the damage from PJ Fraser, and now Tabro might be in some trouble. Vlad goes down in trade for him, but Graves is starting to clean up right here. Double kill for him. He's going to go after Lucid, looking to get the triple kill here. The exhaust is dropped, going to be probably stopping him from bringing down the Sona. Yeah, Sona manages to escape. But they trade, actually, I would say, once again, in terms of map pressure, went in favor of Red Team. 
because they still have top and bottom pushing with super minions and they got the middle inhibitor turret that is every single inhibitor turret down the top inhibitor did just respawn so that's going to be a bit of a load off of the uh shoulders of blue team but they still have so much to worry about right now a single split push could lose two of their inhibitors if they're not careful if because one of the other sides of both Vi and Jarvan having built so heavy into damage means that if they get into the enemy base and are left unchecked, they can take out an inhibitor incredibly, incredibly quickly. So while going for this Baron, Blue Team has to keep an eye on their base. If somebody were to teleport down there, say, like Jarvan, they could very well manage to take out one of the inhibitors, or maybe two of the inhibitors, if left all on their lonesome. But it doesn't look like Jarvan's going to be back up in time to be able to do that during the attempt at Baron that Blue Team is going for right now. And so Blue Team will be able to smite secure the Baron with that Malphite smite. Mount Smite, and uh, take the crab as well for good measure. Head on out of there. Looks like they're roaming down towards the Dragon Camp next, but like I was saying, Jarvan can go for the teleport. He's showing up in the bottom lane. The inhibitor is already down in this lane down here, but there's only one Nexus turret standing as well. So if he gets onto that Nexus turret, he could prove a big, big castle there. And he's just going to go over the mid lane, drop his flag for the attack speed buff, but PJ Fraser is here along with the tournament. There's a lot of damage coming out onto this guy, and he is very, very squishy. He has a single tanky item. Actually, no, now he has two. He has the randomance and the thorn mouth, so he's kind of tanky at this point. But JK is here to try and save his life. The monsoon actually pushing by out of what seemed to be a bad situation. However, Red Team managed to bring down the dragon. Wow! Blue Team and Red Team are off fighting in the jungle there. But that's a triple kill for Graves. This is going disastrously for Red. Ash was off doing the dragon all by herself, and they still decided to go for this fight. A Tournamente gets hit by the Ash Arrow. That's not really going to do all that much. And Ash and Sona are the only ones left alive. They do have the fifth dragon buff, which is kind of a big deal. That's an incredibly powerful buff. But they don't have very many people alive right now. They're on 40 and 50 second death timers, and Blue Team might be able to push for the victory here. Or, at the very least, they're going to be able to push to get an inhibitor turret, because we are 47 and a half minutes into this game. The death timers are obscenely long. Pretty much everybody is at level 17 or 18 right now, so the death timers are very, very long. And there's going to be the inhibitor turret following the inhibitor. Going to be right after that, most likely. Renin's is here. He's bringing the AD. He's shooting that structure with his gun, and he's making it explode. So yeah, the Tournamente actually getting the kill credit for that one. 50 extra gold, by the way. If you kill an inhibitor, you do get the 50 gold. It even applies to the Nexus. The Nexus, in more than just the way it looks, it seems to be coded as some sort of giant inhibitor because it even gives 50 gold when you kill it. Blue team looking to go after the dragon, maybe not realizing that it's already down, that Ash already managed to pick this one up in trade for the team fight, which they won. And um, they're going to take the crab buff away, but they are left dragonless because Ash did take that out from under their team fighting noses. Tournament going to go to the red buff, maybe just take the buffs, head on back to base for what should be a final buy before going for a push up the mid lane or the mid lane if they choose to just go for a straight push to try and win the game and bot or top lane if they want to play the more safe route of going to get another inhibitor here seeing if they can pull off a good team fight and then winning the game and if they can't get the team fight just settling for the inhibitor and backing off with their uh, buff he calls on the drag on the baron buff rather but lucid is wandering through the enemy jungle along with ash actually red team looks to be grouping up towards the top lane they seem to want to go for an open inhibitor of their own but there's some be careful pings because they don't really know where blue team is right now they have a little bit of vision in the blue side jungle, but no blue team members have gone through that area. So they have no idea where blue team is, whether they're regrouping at some point to try and go for a split push, to try and go for some sort of base race into the enemy base, because they already have an inhibitor down, and they have Baron buff. Actually, no, Baron just wore off, so they don't actually have that anymore. But they have an inhibitor down already, so they would have a slight advantage in a base race if they were to go for one. So red team really can't afford to throw all of their eggs in one basket, because if blue team does the same, and manages to get there a little bit before them, or even around the same time as them, they could very easily win a base race. So this game has become a uh, game of who plays their cards first, who chooses to go for that team fight or that all-in push first. And it looks like a Tournamente is really wanting to make Blue Team play their cards first. He's going in, he can't be disabled, and he's going to be knocking up both Syndra and Sona. Milk Custard brings down Joe Steve flashes forward mid-Spirit Rush to get some good damage on the Sona as well. Really wants to finish off these last few team members here while Ash is split pushing in the bottom lane, but I don't really think that Ash is going to be able to match the pushing power of four members of Blue Team. Tournamente doesn't care at all. He's going to go ahead and tank both lasers 
under the tower. The charm lands on the G-Cave, and he goes... Well, actually, no, he didn't quite go down. I thought he would, but he flashed on out of there before he did. Bill Gaines has destroyed a inhibitor down in the bottom lane, and neither Nexus turn has fallen yet. Perhaps Ash can be the hero that her teams need. No, Varia! Varia on the ladder finger managed to get back to base in time and stopped Ash's split push. Now, Red Team has only one hope left in this, and that is if they can pull off a miraculous team fight under their towers. Blue Team has the Super Minion Wave pushing into the Nexus turrets. Right now, they're easily able to melt away the enemy Super Minions, and they have the Minions under the Nexus turrets. This could be the victory right here for Blue Side. Tabro gets charmed forward. He gets melted. Milk Custard is on a killing spree. Eternamente is tanking the turret and does not care at all. That is the second Nexus turret going down. The Nexus is under fire, and this is going to be GG for Blue Side. Well played by both teams. 50 gold into Renin's pockets. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Oh, God, my throat hurts. I'll be seeing you tomorrow.